What is your favorite Gary's Mod map? When I ask most people this question, they begin to scream at me, call me mean names, and throw various objects around the room at dangerously high speeds. Not really. But I have consistently found that it's a pretty tough question for people to answer. Gary's Mod just has so many high-quality classic maps that it's pretty hard to declare just one as your absolute all-time favorite. I honestly don't think there was or ever will be a game that has so many legendary maps under its belt, and at this point the amount of times a Gary's Mod map has ended up significantly impacting online culture is just a little bit concerning. But behind all those legendary Gmod maps that everyone seems to know and love, there lies a seemingly never-ending pile of forgotten Gary's Mod maps. See, for every iconic map that everyone and their mother has seen before, there's probably like 500 old ones that nobody has played on in years and have kind of just been left completely empty, sometimes for over two decades. And I, for one, think it really shouldn't be that way. I'm of the opinion that the oldest, most neglected corners of Gary's Mod are just as, if not more interesting as the most popular, newer ones. So, as a personal tribute to not only the game itself, but also all the classic maps that it's home to, I decided that today, I'm going to explore some of the oldest Gary's Mod maps I can possibly find, just to make sure that even well after you and I stop playing this game, these old, abandoned maps will finally get the chance to live on forever. So obviously I figured the best place to start would be to just go out and find the oldest Gmod map ever. Gmod is a fairly popular game, so I should just be able to type in what is the oldest Gmod map ever in Google and get results, right? No, uh, wrong, very, very wrong. As it turns out, pretty much no one has ever successfully located the first ever Gmod map and there is basically no information online about what it could possibly be. So I hit up my dear friend Fagardo, who is a British, and he plays Gary's Mod, and he took on the monumental task of sifting through old archives in an effort to find the first Gmod map ever. And after looking through hundreds and hundreds of weird-ass forum posts that went all the way back to mid-2004, he came out with this. GM Fun Zone B2A. The oldest surviving Gary's Mod map on the entire internet. Uploaded on February 4th, 2005, just a little over one month after Gmod's first ever release. GM Fun Zone is interesting not only because it's one of the first Gmod maps ever created, it also just has an insanely unique map layout, one that I haven't really seen any modern Gmod map ever even attempt. At first glance, it's just this big, ugly gray box filled with a bunch of random junk, but these little teleporters tucked away on the far ends of the map, in my opinion, take it from being just a cool piece of Gmod history to a genuinely fun sandbox experience. The first teleporter takes you to this big-ass building area, which I assume was meant to be the actual centerpiece of the map. There's a big crane in the middle of it, taken directly from that one chapter in Half-Life 2, and I was pretty surprised to discover that it actually functions. <laughs> He dead? Oh shit, yeah he is. Nice. 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 Gary's Mod didn't even have so much as an undo button when this map was released, so if you found yourself with any trash you wanted to get rid of, you could just toss it in this force field thing and watch it disappear before your very eyes. I took the liberty of tossing this asshole in there a bunch of times. Not for any particular reason, I just, I just thought it'd be funny. The last feature in this area is maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen in a Gary's Mod map, and that's this button in the middle of it that, when pressed, activates this cool-ass zero-gravity field. You can throw basically anything you want in there, and as long as it's in the confines of the barrier, it will be completely unaffected by gravity and endlessly float around with this cool little blue trail coming off the back of it. I know it seems like a super basic feature, and really isn't all that impressive in the year of our lord 2024, but I think it perfectly illustrates just how excited people were to play with Half-Life 2's groundbreaking physics engine in a sandbox setting. The next teleporter took me to this runway area that was made specifically to test out flight. Planes were surprisingly one of the most popular things to build in Gmod's infancy, and you can find some pretty old videos of people trying to build their own planes way back in the day. In GM Fun Zone, the plane building process has been streamlined, and by pressing one button to spawn in a plane, another button to spawn in some ramps, and then attaching some thrusters to the back of the plane, you can take flight in a matter of seconds. 
Unfortunately, because again, there is no undo button and building a working plane in the source engine is a pretty finicky process, you can mess everything up and crash the game pretty easily if you don't know what you're doing. And this probably should not come as a surprise to you, but uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. It's kind of weird to imagine that attempting to fly this glitchy ass plane on the very map I was standing in is among some of the first things anyone ever did in Gary's mod. It really is bizarre just how far this janky Half-Life 2 mod has come in the past 20 years. They got the multiverse now. Gary's mod just straight up has the entire universe map now. I, I think if you told that to somebody from 2005, their head would probably just explode on the spot. The next area was just called Lake, and it's pretty much exactly what I expected it was going to be. A nice, peaceful little lake where you can spawn in an airboat and enjoy a nice, relaxing drive on the water. And because I know at least one person is going to ask me this, I swam to the bottom of the dark lake and there was nothing scary down there, okay? There was, there was no dark figure, there was no Gmod ARG, there was no dead body. Oh, there actually was a dead body at the bottom of the lake, my bad. My bad on that one. The second to last area was called Battleground and it seemed to be some kind of PvP arena. One of the most interesting things about it is that it seems to be at least somewhat inspired by Two Fort, the iconic map from Team Fortress 2. Only this map was released three years before TF2 even came out, so it's a lot more likely that this was inspired by the Team Fortress Classic version from 1999. Also, one of the fortresses had this spawner that supplied one of the teams with an infinite supply of exploding watermelons, which is honestly just 2005 as hell. The last section of the map is, in my opinion, the coolest part of the entire thing. Trap Town a very small, proof-of-concept remake of the Ravenholm chapter from Half-Life 2. I'm not gonna pretend like it's the most impressive thing in the world, or that it even looks half as good as the actual Ravenholm, but it is a fun little place to kill zombies, play with some unique physics straps, and at the end of the day, it is a very important piece of Gary's mod history, considering it was made just three months after Half-Life 2 released. I flew up to the top part of this map and found this little button that says, Do Not Press. Naturally, I pressed it anyways because I am rat lobber, and that spawned in like a hundred fast zombies all at the same time. Quite a devious little prank by the demented creator of this map. I did not enjoy having to fight off 50 different loud ass fast zombies, but at least now I can say that I literally fell for the oldest trick in the book. So that was GM Fun Zone, the oldest Gmod map on the entire internet. Was it the best Gary's Mod map ever? Uh, no. By modern standards, it's actually a pretty bad map. Pretty much everything that exists inside of it was made specifically to make up for the lack of features that Gary's Mod had at the time, and now that Gary's Mod has all those features, it's pretty much entirely obsolete. Still, it is really weird to think that here, this very map that I'm standing in, is where everything we know and love about Gary's Mod all started. It's a product of its time in the most literal sense possible, and I wouldn't want the oldest Gmod map ever to be anything besides that a perfectly preserved time capsule of some of the very first days of Gmod's existence. And also, uh, it's got exploding watermelons, so. Next, I really wanted to focus on maps that weren't just old, but that I knew hadn't been played on in a very, very long time. After all, the entire point of this video is to showcase maps that ideally, no one really knows about. So I hit up this Gary's Mod map archive that contains a wide selection of some of the oldest Gmod maps online and figured I'd just randomly pick some out to play on. The first map I booted up was this nice, highly saturated one from around 2006 called the GM Construct Yes V2. This was basically just an HD remake of the original GM Construct, but it had been expanded a little bit and enhanced with much better lighting. I know people really like the moody, depressing atmosphere of the original Construct, but I honestly feel like this one not only just looks way better, but is also just a lot more welcoming. In terms of the map layout, it's pretty faithful to the original version of Construct, but I do really think the lighting changes the entire vibe of the whole thing. I found this strange little monument right next to the spawn that seemed to list out everyone who was responsible for this map. For whatever reason, there's a giant Foxhound logo from Metal Gear Solid right next to a poorly rotoscoped image of Alex Vance at the top of it. And this bottom part here displays each member's form signature, which is really cool, and I can't help but wonder what any of these people are getting up to nowadays, 20 years later, or if they even remember making this map. Finally, there's two very large features of this map that I've been neglecting to mention up until now. Those being, uh, <laughs> these. 
I don't know what it is, but literally every single time I go out looking for old Gmod stuff, I inevitably find something relating to 9-11. I swear I'm not doing it on purpose. I swear. Anyways, if you're a big fan of Metal Gear Solid and also 9-11, you'll probably find yourself right at home in this cozy little map. Next, we have GM Indoor V1, created on November 23rd, 2005. This one was literally just a giant white indoor space and basically served as a market replacement for GM Construct. It's pretty empty and there's effectively nothing here, but for some odd reason, I actually really like it. This map is what the kids would probably call a hecking liminal space arena. Dancing, walking, rearranging furniture. The next map I picked out was called GM Blend, made in early 2007, and it was basically just a big ass empty map in a white void with a working blender right in the middle of it. You can throw anything you'd like in there and press the on button, which will activate the blades and chop up anything in its path. Again, this is one of those maps that really illustrates just how novel Half-Life 2's physics were at the time, and I think you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find anyone this excited about Gary's Mod's physics engine in the current year. I decided to stuff a bunch of cars into it and then put the lid on top, which resulted in, you know, probably the worst sound that I've ever heard. Next up was BRK Cliffside Home Beta. A peaceful little map from November 2005. You've probably never seen this map before, but there's a pretty good chance you've seen one like it. It's a simple little house sitting on the edge of a cliff, but the big draw of this map is that it's fully destructible. You can shoot, crowbar, or explode any part of it, and it'll break off of the main structure and take on sophisticated physics. It's a very simple idea, but some of the most fun I had as a kid was playing maps that were made exactly like this. I understand that video game physics engines have gotten so advanced that this all seems pretty trivial now, and there's games that could pull this off much better than Gmod ever could, but I think in games like Teardown, a little bit of the soul that made these maps so fun has kind of been lost. I really wanted to end my journey through these old maps with something strong and chock full of old culture. Something that wasn't just an old map, but actually contained relics inside of it that perfectly reflected the time period it came out in. And no map seemed like a better candidate for that than GM WTF-5, a map from early 2007. I spawned into GM WTF and I could instantly tell that this map was going to be a true journey. One, because of just how big it was, and two, because right next to spawn there was a giant awesome face staring directly at me. For those younger viewers in the audience who might not know what the awesome face is, the best way I can describe it is that it's the pure essence of the year 2007. I followed the closest road to spawn I could find, which took me to this bridge that took me to a small castle. On the stairs leading up to the castle, there was a drawing of what I believe to be the character uh, Midna from The Legend of Zelda wearing some very revealing clothing. Clothing so revealing that I probably have to put this giant bar over it or YouTube will get very mad at me. I'm a mostly normal person, so I tried my best to ignore that and make my way up the castle, where I soon discovered that I could not ignore that, seeing as the entire castle seemed to exist solely as a shrine to the character Midna. If you interact with the picture of her by pressing E, the text, She's So Awesome, will suddenly appear on your screen. I was expecting a lot of things when I booted this map up, but I'm not sure that I expected the creator to have a giant crush on a, on a character from The Legend of Zelda. I'll be, I'll be honest. I made my way closer to the center of the map and tried my best to forget what I had just seen, which was actually pretty easy because this seemed to be where all of the main content of the map was being housed. There was a big line of tinker toys that the mapper had laid out, which were all punctuated by this giant billboard that displayed maybe the most old guy meme I have ever seen in my entire life. The first tinker toy in this large line of 2007 tinker toys was a portal with a big sign that said GTFO. Upon walking into it, it uh, didn't actually do anything. There was a sign next to that that said Gat Cowbell, and surprisingly, this one actually worked. All it did though was spawn a giant cowbell on top of your head the second you pressed on the button. I assumed that this was a reference to that old SNL sketch where Will Ferrell is hitting a cowbell uh, very hard. Next up was this weird building that had Dr. Kleiner stuck inside of it, and as far as I could tell, it didn't actually serve any specific purpose. 
The NPC inside of it wasn't even actually an NPC, as a matter of fact, it was just a static prop. There was this old ass meme of a dog carrying a piece of bread that said my sandwich plastered on the side of the building though, and frankly I think, I think that is worth something. I came up to this weird box that had a window on it, which seemed to be some kind of torture chamber for NPCs. You could spawn them in at will, and do things like explode them, light them on fire, or spawn in a combine bad guy to execute them in cold blood. As weird as it sounds, uh, this part was actually super nostalgic, and reminded me a lot of those stickman torture flash games that everyone seemed to love to play back in the day. Across from that, there was this big pool, complete with a dead guy sitting at the bottom. As luck would have it though, according to the sign, the pool seemed to be closed. Now for what reason was the pool closed? You know, I guess we'll, it's just one of those things, you know, we'll never, we'll probably never know. That was pretty much the entire map, and the only place left to actually visit was the sky. The sky had a nice little sky room, which, big surprise, featured more old ass memes, and these two apartment building type things, which I assume was supposed to act as sort of the player's house. Somewhere you could just kick back and relax when you weren't, you know, torturing uh, innocent people. GMWTF is honestly exactly what I was looking for when I set out to find these old Gmod maps. It's rough, it's dated as hell, and you couldn't ask for a more perfect time capsule of the old internet. If you're a younger viewer and you genuinely have no idea what the internet was like back in the day, you can boot up this map and get a pretty good feel for what it felt like to be on the computer too much in the year 2007. Was GMWTF a bad map? Yes. Did it have a sense of humor that might be considered questionable in the modern age? Also, yes. But that's exactly what makes it such an interesting map, and I wouldn't change a single thing about it, even if I could. Actually, maybe I'd take out the weird tribute to the Zelda girl thing. I don't, I don't know about that. It's it's a little strange. If it were me, if I, if I made this map, it'd, it'd look like this. Hell yeah. That's way better. It was honestly really fun to just dig through old Gmod maps at complete random, and it was a really unique experience, especially because I wasn't really looking for anything in particular. But even with that mostly random methodology of picking out maps, I still managed to find ones that were not only cool, but also pretty culturally and historically significant. I doubt Gary's mod will last forever, unfortunately. But the impact that these maps, usually made by guys in high school during their free time, had on the internet is, for better or for worse, irreversible, and will be a part of this strange online ecosystem we've created pretty much until the end of time. Also, because I feel like it would be a sin not to do this, I had my good buddy Fagardo, who saved GM Fun Zone from obscurity in the first place, re-upload it to the Steam Workshop, and I'm happy to report it works just fine, even in the newest versions of Gary's Mod. So, if you want to poke around the oldest Gmod map ever made, that'd be a pretty good place to do that. Thank you for listening to me yap about old stuff for the 60th time in a row now. I genuinely do appreciate every single person who watches this channel, and I hope above all else that these videos are as fun for you as they are for me. Also, uh, look at this picture. I think it's pretty good. Hell yeah. What do you think? All right. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Ratlobber. Hey, y'all. Thanks for watching. This is Ratlobber speaking. I'm Ratlobber. Thanks for watching this video about Gary's Mod, Oldest Maps. Those maps are crazy as hell. I particularly enjoyed that joint where it had the big ass blender in it. Make sure y'all be on the lookout for my next video where I smoke 50 backwoods straight to the face. Alright y'all, peace.